Welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about vector multiplication. Let's begin. Vector multiplication. Okay. This is part one. When it comes to vectors being multiplied, it's not like normal numbers being multiplied. Turns out there are two kinds of multiplication. The first kind of multiplication we're going to talk about is called as a dot product. Let us define what a dot product is. Look, suppose you have two vectors. Vector A, which is along this direction, and you have vector B, which is this way. And let's say the angle between them is theta. We define dot product A dot B. That's why it's called as dot because you put a dot over there as the magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of B into cos of the angle theta between them. Now, if you notice this carefully, you will see that on the left hand side, you have vectors. These guys are vectors because they have a little arrowhead on them. But look at these guys. These guys are just numbers because we've taken magnitudes and cos is just a ratio. So these are scalars. Therefore, dot product is also called as a scalar product. And the reason for that is because the product is a number. So product equals just a number. That means two vectors can be multiplied to give you a scalar. That's possible. Okay. Let's try and understand a little bit more about what dot product tells you. What, what's the meaning of it? To understand that, let's take an example. Suppose magnitude of A is 10 units and magnitude of B is let's say 5 units and let's, let's say the angle between them is 0 degrees or let's start with 30 degrees. Well, then dot product becomes, so here is our two vectors. 30 degrees then the dot product a dot b will end up becoming 10 into 5 into cos 30 and that will give you 50 times root 3 by 2 which is 25 root 3 now notice what would have happened if let's put some lines here if the angle theta between them were to increase and become 60 degrees. Well, now you would see the dot product a dot b would be equal to 10 times 5 times cos 60 which means it is 50 into half that is 25. Notice what happened here. Here 25 root 3 so here the value was bigger and the value became smaller. So as the theta increases as your angle is increasing your dot product is decreasing so what do you expect to happen if the angle increased even further let's increase it all the way to 90 degrees well you know that cos 90 is 0 right so since cos 90 is 0 a dot b just becomes 0 and lastly what would happen if theta was 0 degrees well cos 0 is 1 so a dot b would become um, 50, what was it? 10 multiplied by 5 multiplied by cos 0 which is 50 notice that this is the maximum value you can ever have for a dot product so what you can understand is that when the two vectors are in line this way when they are parallel to each other dot product is maximum but as the angle starts increasing, dot product decreases. It decreases and when they are perpendicular to each other, dot product just becomes zero. What do you think would happen if the angle were to become more than 90 degrees? Let's find out. What would happen if theta were more than 90? Let's say it was something like, I don't know, 120 degrees maybe? In that case, a dot b would be let's see it would be 10 multiplied by 5 multiplied by cos of 120 degrees that would be 50 into cos of 120 allied angles 
is the same as negative cos 60 which is um, minus half that is minus 25 that's it minus 25 Ooh, it's the same as this but you're getting a negative answer so the negative answer signifies something what what does it signify it's a scalar right what does a negative scalar signify well what you need to understand from all of this is that dot product is trying to tell you how parallel two vectors are think about it when two vectors are exactly parallel to each other the dot product becomes maximum when the two vectors have some angle the dot product still has some number why because remember this vector has some component in this direction remember it has some component in this direction and that's why there is still some parallelism left it's not as parallel as this this is the perfect parallel case but there is some parallelism and therefore the dot product has decreased but it's still finite value but as you increase the angle dot product decreases because the parallelism is decreasing finally when you become perpendicular remember a vector has no component in the perpendicular directions therefore dot product becomes absolutely zero but think about this one what happens when the angle becomes more than z more than 90 degrees now it has a component in the anti-parallel direction you see this one Ooh, so anti-parallel means negative so if you get dot product as a negative number it means the vectors are anti-parallel or angle is not anti-parallel the angle is more than 90 degrees and if dot product is positive the angle is less than they're acute less than 90 degrees and if the dot product is zero it means they are perpendicular to each other so we can write down the dot product is a measure of parallelism so it tells you how parallel two vectors are.